¿Qué tal chicos? Buenas tardes a todos, soy Traxxum, ser bienvenidos a otro vídeo de Cruiser Kings 3 para consola. Creo que es la última semana probablemente que vamos a hablar del juego para consola, eh, salvo que haya alguna sorpresa y tal. Ya han sacado varios vídeos, diarios de desarrollo y tal, y bueno, digo, vamos a hacer un vídeo comentándolo un poco todo. Ya sabéis que el juego sale, eh, salió ayer para Play 5 y para las dos nuevas Xbox, ¿vale? Es decir, solo está para consolas de última generación, porque ayer me escribí a alguien diciendo eh, me lo he comprado para el Xbox One y me dice que no esté disponible, en plan, me dejo los 50 euros, tal. Y, y no está disponible para el Xbox One, ¿vale? O sea, igual os aparece en la tienda o lo que sea, pero no está disponible para esa consola, solo está para la X y para la S, y lo mismo con la Play 4 y la Play 5, ¿vale? Entonces... Eh, salvo que seáis una de esas personas afortunadas que tienen las nuevas consolas, no os lo intentéis pillar porque no os va a servir de nada, ¿vale? En plan, eh, pillaroslo en la nueva generación. En fin, este es el taller de lanzamiento. We have waited years for our chance to rule these lands. We will wait no more. Our true legacy shall be built with weddings, not warriors. Daggers, not swords. But if war comes knocking, rest assured, we will answer. Never forget. Real strategy requires cunning. Está guapo el Tyler, tío. Está guapo, eh. Por cierto, lo ha hecho Lab42, ¿vale? Para los que podáis decir, no, es que Paradox se ha estado haciendo esto en vez de trabajar en el juego actual o lo que sea. Está, o sea, ha trabajado otro estudio, ha trabajado otro equipo en esto, ¿vale? Que se llama la 42. No sé si son los que han hecho Stellaris, creo que no, Stellaris para consolas. Y Stellaris para consolas está bastante bien, o sea que en principio esto debería estar bien, ¿vale? Eh, vale, más cositas, esto os va a interesar también a los jugadores de PC. Eh, han dicho algunas características exclusivas que tiene el juego en consola. Ya han dicho que probablemente acaben llegando a PC, ¿vale? ¿Cuáles son? A ver, pues optimización técnica, obviamente, ¿no? Porque tú cuando haces un juego para consolas sabes exactamente qué recursos tiene el equipo para el que estás haciendo el juego, adaptándolo, etc. Entonces el juego debería ir mejor, mejor ese tipo de cosas. Hay un tutorial nuevo, hay nuevas eh, ayudas, etc. ¿vale? Pero lo que os va a interesar bastante es que, por ejemplo, han metido nuevos logros Aparte de los ya existentes en la versión actual del juego, hay nuevos logros en la versión de consola aparentemente. Creo que es porque tienen que llegar a 50 eh, eh, los juegos en consola, pero igual me estoy tirando un invent esto porque no lo sé seguro, ¿vale? Es una teoría que tengo, ¿vale? Luego han introducido una barra de acceso rápido y eh, que te ayuda pues un poco a interactuar más rápido con el juego. Y otra cosa que han metido es la opción de automatizar ejércitos, ¿vale? Es algo que existe ya más o menos en Europa Universalis 4 y existía en Imperator. Y ahora pues va a estar también en eh, Crusader Kings 3. Esto han especificado que lo quieren meter en la versión de PC también, ¿vale? Y esto es todo un poco por el diario de desarrollo de ayer. Vamos a ver ahora eh, eh, este vídeo que se llama Interfaz de Consola. A ver qué nos cuentan. No sé si está en español, chicos, me temo que no. Si, es, si vemos que no nos aporta nada, lo quito, ¿vale? Igual vemos un poco de gameplay. Acabo de mirar los logros del Cruiser Kings 3 en PC y hay 86 ahora mismo, o sea que no, me, no, no sería lo de los 50, ¿vale? En nuestros settings, you know, notas que puedes hacer either the right o el right bumper o el left bumper para mover entre tus opciones de menú, tus gráficos y tu audio. Next up, vale. we will go into configuraciones. Esto es también algo que estás muy familiar con. 
but it does have all of the terms that we use in the game, so you can check them out and search for any of the ones that you may have a question about. So, you want to start a new game, and as always, you want to be fresh and new and get a ruler that you know and love. So once you pull up our screen, you'll notice that we have the normal familiar map mode with all of your favorite familiars. To tab back and forth between time periods, you'll need to use your triggers, left trigger and right trigger, to tab back and forth. But now we're going to go over to the Any Ruler screen, where you can select pretty much any ruler that we have loaded into the game at this time. Once you've selected custom rulers, you can tab back and forth between your players and game settings tabs with right bumper and left bumper. So, esta confirma que en el mínimo esta versión del juego es la 1.2. Creemos que no es la 1.3 porque no han hecho hincapié en que está lo de los vikingos y tal, pero sí que está el editor de personajes. Entonces, lo que más sentido tiene Creo que es que es la 1.2 del, del Crusader Kings 3, ahora estamos en la 1.5, como ya sabéis. Bueno, vamos a seleccionar esos game settings, y esto es donde puedes cambiar tus reglas de juego y tu dificultad. La dificultad va de muy fácil a normal, pero si quieres un poco más de desafío, eso es en las reglas de juego. Seleccionarlo y puedes ver todas las diferentes reglas que sabes y amas, cambiar la dificultad y el estilo de juego. Y, para los que estén en casa que ya han jugado el juego, y quieren tener un poco más de desafío, esta es la donde vas a enablar el modo Iron Man en el más alto nivel. Y para los que estén en casa, esta es la donde vas a enablar el Iron Man en el más alto nivel. Me sorprende que exista el modo Iron Man en la versión de consola, chicos, porque qué chetos vas a hacer en la versión de consola, ¿sabes? Once you've set your game rules, we can go back and select a ruler. These are all the regions and settings that we have inside of the normal CK3 PC edition. Now, one important thing to note is your right thumbstick will be in charge of zooming in. You can play as one of the kingdom rulers of the high-level kingdoms, or you can zoom in and get as small as you want to play any of the counties or duchies that are available in game with that stick. right thumbstick. Once you've zoomed back out, find a ruler that you're comfortable with, no matter who that might be, and select them. Today, we're going to go with the tutorial character, the petty king of Ireland. And the first thing you'll notice is you have a reticle in the middle of the screen to help you navigate. This will stay with you anywhere on the map screen to move around highlight or select any of the features or areas you want. The character window. This is where you'll live most of the game. We have the family, relationship, court and vassals of your character. La interfaz es que es distinta, eh, window, pero encaja, ¿no? Left bumper and right bumper to select them. In order to better understand your character, you can select any of these windows. We're going to start with traits. We're going to select it and pop it out so we can see exactly what traits our character. Ahí ves los rasgos, okay. If you notice any of the blue text on Se va bastante bien, eh. Those are all interactable. Tío, If una duda que yo tengo, y esto me pasa como usuario casual un poco de consolas, eh, y esto os pasará mucho seguro, si te jugáis una tele más o menos grande, tema de leer texto. Si hay mucho texto o es muy pequeño, en plan, aquí estoy seguro de que creo que el texto va a estar bien de tamaño, pero igual según cómo sea la tele o la resolución y tal... Si hay que forzar mucho la vista, eso te puede cansar mucho, ¿eh? En sesiones largas de juego. You can open up your tooltips to select them and find out more about this experience inside of them. Once you've opened up those boxes, you can explore as deep as you want, selecting the blue text and continuing to open up boxes. You can open up as many boxes as you want or select as many terms as you want to continue deep diving to get a better understanding of the system. Claro, pero aquí... Please note that if you ever get lost or stuck in this, you can press and hold the B button to return to your main screen at any time. Once you've familiarized yourself with your character, we can drop back out to the main map. You'll notice on the left and right side of the screens that we have a hold symbol for the triggers. These bring up our new radial function. The radial functions are going to be one of the quickest and easiest ways to navigate in the game. Once you hold and select the left trigger, It'll pop up the character radial. This shows you all of the things that are important to your character and helps you navigate quickly and accurately. Another core mechanic that has changed slightly from the PC version is our hints menu. A ver. In order to access this, simply tap in on your right thumbstick. This will bring up your alerts 
as well as your suggestions. Bueno, es como lo que nos aparece arriba en PC, ¿no? So we're going to go ahead and fix that by popping open our lifestyle menu. We already have Marshall, and we're already going through that tree. So that seems like a good place to start for us. We have a lot of the Overseer perks already selected, and you can see if you hover over any of the other options, it shows you a brief description of exactly what all these perks do if you want to unlock them at a future time. Pues que me sigue pareciendo un poco follón, eh. Once we've selected our lifestyle, we're not married, which, as you may understand, is kind of a problem if you have a spouse position on your council and want that filled. So to make sure that we're utilizing our council to the fullest of our abilities, we're going to select a spouse, pop open our menu, and currently we have it sorted by relevance. But we can also select any of the dropdowns to filter them in this view. And if you want to filter or search for anything that you don't see immediately in those dropdowns, you can click on more options and it'll bring up a list of all the things you can filter and search for. Tío, no, no me habría no habría justificado jamás la interfaz del CK3 para que sacara luego el juego en consola después, eh. Qué locura, tío. At this time, we're going to go with uh, the game suggestion and find the best and most relevant wife and we're going to go ahead and ask her to marry us. Once we've sent off that marriage request asking for the lady's hand, we will back out. You'll notice this also removes a lot of the notifications we had as those were dependent upon that action. The next thing we're going to do is use our bumpers to select suggestions. Now, again, like I said, these are things the game wants you to know and are very important for you to know, but it's your choice what to do with them. A ver qué tal el tutorial tú, para la gente que lo compre en consola. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to unpause the game. Claro, es que este juego te lo puedes encontrar en una estantería en el game, ¿no? Te lo compras. Habrá gente que se sorprenderá, tío. Start things off right. And then we get a message. Accepting our marriage proposal. We've made new allies from that marriage, and that ally is going to call on us to help him in a war. You can see the menus that allow you to check what happens if you say yes or no once you've accepted or declined this offer to go to war. At the bottom, you'll notice our war scores menu and our armies menu. You can hit left bumper or right bumper to select them respectively. You can see them and check them out before you hit A to confirm which one you would like to bring up. We're going to do the next inevitable step, which is to raise our armies. You notice we now have a new notification. This is that we've joined the war, and it gives us the bumper options of left bumper and right bumper simultaneously to bring it up. This will show us what that entire box looks like and give us any further details that are associated with it and let us explore it further if there are other options. The next thing you'll notice is that we got a notification in our military tab. So we're going to hit right trigger to select that to pop it open and see what we've got going on. Here you'll notice something that is truly unique. To Mira, hace, ahí se está, se puede automatizar el ejército, tío. AI controlled warfare. Y configuras cómo quieres que tire la, la IA, tío. Once we've selected okay. the stance of the AI, we can select whether or not we want to lead that army. And since it's an AI army with a small amount of troops, we're just going to go ahead and stay at home for this one and remove ourselves as commander of that army. Once we're back in the main military tab, this is also where you can select your rally points and check if you want to continue supplying these on a monthly basis for your armies. We are also not going to set a rally point again because we don't have much territory, but this is exactly where you would do it. Also inside of that military tab, you can use your bumper buttons, again left bumper or right bumper, to select the different tabs. This includes things such as your armies, so you can check the composition of your armies or create more regiments. Right now, we're not going to create a new one because no well, están los precios adaptados, eh? And it's really hard to supply them. De la 1 4, creo que fue. This is also where you would get to the mercenary menu and select which of the companies you want to use. Also in this tab is your holy orders. Tío, you no están los precios escalados, que raro se hace, eh? eso lo cambiaron, tío. Utilize those at a later time. As you can tell, we don't have a holy order, and we could work on founding one, but it seems a little early in the game for that. So we just wanted to showcase it for you, let you know where it is and how it looks before moving on. Once those military actions have been decided, we're going to go ahead and unpause and see how things play out. 
I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Again, utilizing that right thumbstick to pull back and get a better view of what's going on. And we're going to go ahead and increase the speed to, you know, top things off quickly. Our army goes over to England. We join our allies and things get a little bit chaotic. That's how war always is. And our automatic <laughs> no eh? handling things quite well. No está haciendo nada, tío. Let's go. So, the war in England is progressing well. We're capturing territories, our army's doing what it thinks is best, we're enforcing our allies, and we're at home while our army is out fighting. And um, so we should take a look at all of our tabs at the top to make sure we're up to date on current issues. You notice we have a pop-up for decisions, so we're going to use our triggers to once again go over to those decisions, and then we can tab back through, get a brief overview of everything that's going on, and back to our realm. So, things in Ireland and England are going quite well. We've got the war well in hand with our new automated AI, but there's a whole world to explore, and we want to show it off a little bit more for you. We're going to use that right thumbstick again to zoom in, zoom out, show you how easy it is to zoom out, we're going to show you what the new map radio looks like. That right trigger that you're going to push down and hold for a second, which will bring up our map radio. Que metan esto en PC, tío. But we're going to show you Dutchies, and then... Tío, que metan esta ruleta en PC, tío. Por favor. En plan... Es un rollo siempre cambiar de mapa en los juegos de Paradox, tío. Rollo que puedas hacer... No sé. Alguna hotkey, tío, en el mapa. Y saques una ruleta así, tío. Sería increíble. Mm. We'll show you some kingdoms. Uh, there are things such as governments, faiths, counties, empires, however you want to view the map. You can also select any of them at any time to, say, explore the faiths and see how the faiths are spreading across the entire known world. On the way back home, we're going to stop in and check on some of our neighbors. Now, one of the most important things with Crusader Kings is knowing what's going on in the world at any given time. So. We're going to zoom in on any given territory, and as you can see, you can get quite detailed. Now, once we pull up any of these territories, you can see the characters and everything about them once you select them. This is important for Crusader Kings to understand how the grand tapestry of all of your interconnected dealings go on around the world. You can do this with any territory and see just about everybody's family lineage, traits, qualities, and attributes at any given time. So make sure you're utilizing that because the story to tell is yours alone. So that is exactly what you can expect from the console version of Crusader King 3. Tío, yo sinceramente esperaba que adapta que lo hicieran el juego más fácil o algo en consola. Sinceramente os lo digo, eh. Me da la sensación de que es el mismo juego que en PC y creo que tienes que encontrar demasiadas cosas para que sea cómodo jugarlo en consola, me explico en plan, eh, lo de automatizar el ejército creo que es un paso un poco en esa dirección, que está bien, eh, creo que lo tienen que meter en PC también, pero es como que, tío, es mucho, ¿no? En plan, es que tienes que estar pendiente de tanto y pausar tanto y mirar tantas cosas, tío, que es muy incómodo, o oh, se me hace la sensación, tío, no lo sé. A ver, el problema con esto es un poco... En mi opinión, que este juego, este juego, como pasaba con Stellaris, creo que sucede un poco el mito de la caverna de Platón, entre comillas. Si tú juegas a Crusader Kings 3 en consola sin haber jugado a ningún otro juego de Paradox y sin eh, haber tocado nunca a Crusader Kings 3, seguramente te da una impresión distinta que si lo has jugado primero en PC y después lo juegas en consola. Y es lo que me pasó un poco con la versión de Stellaris de consola, tío, que si lo has jugado en PC y ves que obviamente todo es más cómodo en PC, por mucho que sea una buena adaptación y estén bien hechos los controles y el juego vaya bien y vaya fluido y vaya rápido, que todo está genial, si al final te es más cómodo jugar una versión que ya conoces, no lo sé, tío, en plan, ¿qué lugar acaba teniendo esto, no? Al menos para un jugador ya veterano de, del título, ¿no? Vamos a ver este último vídeo, se llama... Chat con los desarrolladores. Howdy, y'all. Troy here, your community manager for all things Crusader Kings related. Bring you a special presentation about Crusader Kings 3 coming to console soon. With me today, I have Justin Forrest, the design director from Lab42 Games, as well as Alexander Oltner, the game director for Crusader Kings here at Paradox. 
bueno, creador de la versión para consola y director del juego, ¿no? Console edition and to drill into and deep dive all the differences and compare some of our favorite features. Without much further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Alexander and let him tell you a little bit more about it. All right. So, Crusader Kings is a very big and complex and fun game and it's been exclusively available to PC players for a long time, but Really, there's nothing saying that this game shouldn't also be enjoyed by people sitting on their sofa playing on a console, right? So, I know it's been challenging, but do you want to talk a little bit about how challenging it's been? Lab 42 have got a huge amount of experience within console development. Um, so taking on this project, which is such a superb core game, and trying to adapt it to console in the best possible way, was uh, I would say one of the most challenging things I've done really over time. Me parece una locura lo que han hecho. And it took some real innovation in terms of the approaches that we took. Really el CK3 a esa consola flipas. Uh, because I think it, it it required a kind of unique treatment. You couldn't just cookie cut the the adaptation. You couldn't say right, we're just going to follow that template and just apply it. And I have to say that the relationship between Paradox and Lab 42 all the way through the development process was excellent and I think without that clear coordination I think we would have struggled but I think that that's been a real um, boom to the project and I'm, I'm really pleased with where we are. I think for both parties honestly it's been interesting to see all the thought you've put into this and how it's working. Let's be honest here playing the game requires you to look all over the screen all at once and really as you mentioned a mouse is what you need or so we thought. The UI needed unique treatment um, and then there were features that really could, didn't come from any other game that we could look at and compare we had to come up with solutions ourselves for instance the switching focus feature i mean that's something i haven't really seen in a console game in a way it kind of mimics the way that you can quickly navigate across the screen on mouse just by using the right stick to flip yo le daría una oportunidad eh, de tenerlo en consola de tener alguna de las consolas nuevas de tener la xbox one X o S eh, y el Game Pass lo probaría 100%, tío. Tengo mucha curiosidad. Tengo mucha curiosidad porque igual es muy buena adaptación, ¿sabéis? No sé si habrá reviews que hace que no son muy fiables o no siempre son fiables, pero me gustaría leer alguno. And flick between any active processes and then select any of those to open up the appropriate menu. So it's almost like a shortcut which works on console, which you didn't need on PC because you've got so many shortcuts yeah. anyway. And what you did really was to not look at what people do, but what they want to have done, right? You, it's the experience that's been translated, not the controls. It would have been arrogant of us to, to even consider trying to change the core of the game that you guys designed and developed. It's such an excellent game, why would we ever want to touch that? So really the focus is on trying to replicate that kind of user experience that you get through, the immersion that you get through the, the PC title and translating that onto console so console users could experience, could gain the same kind of experience. So you've done this really truthful um, translation of uh, the PC game, but the consoles have features unique to them, right? And you've leveraged a lot of them to make the experience on consoles uh, stand out. This was never seen as being a port. This is a proper adaptation, in my opinion. And it actually required a lot of design thinking um, for what features would enhance that experience for console users. I'll kind of go through some examples. Um, automated warfare. This is a, a console specific feature. This is designed really for those players who don't want to micromanage the, their army and can maybe want to focus on. A ver, yo en Cruiser Kings 3 se me haría más raro automatizar mi ejército. Al menos, nada, es que es lo de siempre, tío. Las fases tardías de la partida sí que lo pondrías, yo creo. On the dark arts of intrigue, or, you know, perfecting the bloodlines of, of, of the dynasty. So you've got, you've got the ability to be able to switch between automated or manual control of your armies and warfare. Now, this, this also allows for some advanced controls in there where you can go and set specific things associated with automated warfare. One of those features which, um, really is, is designed for console but may make its way back to PC 
that's always the aim that that I have on uh, with designers that ultimately if you come up with a really good a ver qué ritmo so tienen actualizaciones pues supongo que el objetivo será it's ponerlo al día de PC well, no? I think it's um, just a finely crafted feature so stress is a big part of the game it's probably something you want to just talk about Chris. supongo que la idea será acabar sincronizando los lanzamientos sí. Yeah. Quiere decir que no está tan adelantado Cruiser Kings 3 como Stellaris, ¿no? Why not? Stress is tied to your character, and the less you act like your character would, the more stress you accrue. It can also be accrued by, you know, your friends dying, or your family dying, and your character will slowly lose their mind when you ascend into the higher levels of stress. That's when this feature kicks in, right? What we try to do in a, in in a way was try to replicate the feeling of stress on the controller itself. We use the trigger resistance and the, the, the triggers are used Utilizar los triggers cuando te sube el estrés, tío. Okay. Game. So we've got what we call the command La vibración y por ahí, ¿no? Which is your realm, your military, your um, your courts, your council. Um, that's displayed at the top of the screen on console. And you navigate through those menus using either of the triggers. If you want to open up the character radial, which has got um, uh, aspects of the character which you could deep dive into, like their dynasty menu, etc., that's also that is done through holding in the left trigger. And then the right trigger brings up all the various different map views in the game. So these are very well used controls. And if you apply stress to those triggers with the trigger resistance, you start to replicate for the user that feeling of stress within your character. So it's just a nice little way of kind of adding an extra tier of immersion to the game and really looking at the console specific oui. features and trying to marry them with the Crusader Kings experience. I mean, when we get big events happening in game, like the death of a child um, or an heir, then those events within the game are also use haptics So on the PS5 you'll get unique rumbles and, and motion within the controller itself. And then you get local audio, local controller audio coming out with music which is unique to those specific events. So really we've just tried to pinpoint um, where the console could enhance specific features of the original game. Yo me ha hecho esta gente antes, eh? Well, Justin, Alexander, thank you so much. Vale, os enseño. Eh, las reviews que ha tenido, las cuatro reviews que han publicado de, al menos en Metacritic, ¿eh? del juego PlayStation Universe a ver no hay nada como Crusader Kings 3 en consola eh, han incluido elementos de roleplay emergente de Crusader Kings 3 y es tiene mejor acercamiento que sus eh, predecesores de estrategia más duros. Paradox ha creado algo para atraer a los fans de la estrategia, no, no los fans tradicionales de la no estrategia, al género. Y que es un juego de tronos simulator. Ok. Dice, lanza la... Terrible complejidad de un juego de gran estrategia de PC en consolas es un, una tarea de Herculea. Y Crusader Kings 3 lo consigue con, eh, con aplomo y deathness, que no sé qué coño es. Con habilidad, ¿no? Y Puss Square que dice, es fácil ver por qué Crusader Kings 3 es tan adorado en PC. Es brillantemente profundo y un juego de estrategia dinámico que nunca te deja de dar. Pero necesitas eh, comprometerte a aprender todas sus infinitas intríngulis antes de sumergirte de verdad. Un juego peligrosamente activo una vez te has sumergido. Y veis que tiene un 87 de media. Bueno, pues yo qué sé. No sé si alguien lo prueba y tal que comente sus impresiones. No pinta mal. Me gustaría probarlo. Y poco más. Nos vemos en el siguiente vídeo, chicos. Cuidaros. Chao, chao.